G'day guys and welcome to the Back Pocket Plugger Podcast. My name is Caden McDonald coming at you live with Connor Rogers. How are you, Rogie? Never better, especially after a big Baggers win. If that doesn't cure, cure the soul, nothing will. We have talked about doing this or something along the lines of this for a very long time. Yeah, for about 15 minutes, uh, we just set up, put it all together. <laughs> and, away, and we're off to the races. It's been about five years in the making of doing a pod. Uh, we've tried before, but they were feeble attempts, but I'm glad we're here now talking about what we love. Uh, and that is primarily around being a back pocket plugger. Yeah. yeah. Uh, the people at home may not be aware as to what a back pocket plugger actually is. Well, I wasn't for a few years. Well, a lot of people still aren't. There's mass confusion um, <laughs> in the YouTube comments. We <laughs> bought it in the shower one day. I was singing along to myself, just as you do in the shower, almost freestyle rap, and mm. just, you're a back pocket plugger. Because I am a reserves back pocket, and I plug a hole. Yep. I, I used to be a forward pocket, and then I said to the coach, I don't want to borrow this anymore. I want to shut some people down. Did you actually? No, I got moved to the back pocket. <laughs> yeah, I've always been a passionate <laughs> back pocket man. But I think there is mass confusion because Kevin Sheedy famously coined the phrase, he's just a back pocket plumber. Because back in the days when you used to have your own profession, you used to have a job when on top of playing footy. Yeah. He'd pl- plumb. And he, his coach said to him, you're just a back pocket plumber and that's it. Yep. And people think that I misheard it. And Do I've, they actually? Yeah, and I've translated it to back pocket plugger. But I'm here to say that, no, that's not what happened. I think I've coined my own phrase for back pocket plug. Or you we have. have. No, you have for sure. And it's just someone that plugs a hole, but tries their guts out. But also, plugger is the greatest AFL player, like, arguably. So it's also like he's the back pocket gun. He's exactly the back pocket right. plugger. It's got dual meaning and try meaning if you throw in the back and pocket like, plug. Yeah, plug a hole. And yeah. that's what we are. And that's why I think this podcast is so important because you can go listen to any old podcast or listen to SCN, Triple M, yep. and you've got the, the experts. And they've never been in a back pocket in their life. Never been in a back pocket. No. Well, see, even if they have been in the back pocket, even if you chat to a Glenn Archer on Triple M in the morning, yep. right? these are people that have been paid $500,000 plus a year to yep. play the game. Yep. Who are we to say, or how do we know that their heart's in the right place, if they're passionate or if they love the game or if they love the money? No, nah, greedy. The opinions you want to get are from those in the back pocket, in the twos. They're paying their subs. Yep. Well, I pay $500 <laughs> to play the game. That's how much I love it. Yep. And that's whose opinion should matter most, the exactly. back pocket players. So exactly. without further ado, let's let's talk some footy. Mate, I'm keen. Um, back pocket plugger podcast. It's, um, yeah, we're going to talk some jargon, going to talk some footy. It's been a great start to the season. Isn't it? Isn't it phenomenal? The new rules. People, I hate the don't. Oh, too many rule changes brigade. There, there, so yeah, the, and there are a few of them. Yeah, and there was especially. There has been rules that get tinkered. That, like, I'm, I'm not convinced on the six six six. I don't mind it. Yeah, I'm not fully convinced. There's, you know, a, a tinkering here or there that you just go. An what? interpretation. An interpretation. Yeah. Uh, uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, uh, insufficient. Uh, attempt to keep the ball in. It's no, not, it's not, yeah, de- it's not, deliberate, it's not anymore. deliberate anymore. Stop yelling deliberate. I know. Insufficient attempt <laughs> to get the ball in, for God's sake. So, but yeah, the AFL like a tinker. They like a tickle. But I am stoked with what they've done over, over the summer. I am all about being progressive and making changes, getting on the front foot because people are saying don't change the game. But if you watch the product over the last five years, I'd be watching neutral games and I love me footy and I'd, I'd be bored shitless. Yeah. It just wasn't. You're watching scores and 50 to 40 and it's just everyone. Remember when Paul Roos bought in, I think it was Paul Roosy, bought in the flood. He uh, did. And people were going berserk and then it just turned into 18 teams were flooding. Yeah. So then it, it was the flood and then it was uh, the Weagles web. Yeah. And then it was the full team press and then it was the Tigers pressure. And all of those things combined created just congestion down, ball up after ball up. Uh, and um, Amita Bowl loves that footy, though. Uh, he, good, he friend lo- of, good friend of the podcast. Good friend of the show. Um, he loves... Uh, the scrap. Just... Rugby. Like 40 to 45, end of the game, two teams have just locked it down. Who's going to who's gonna win from here? Uh, almost a war of attrition. Yeah, the, absolutely. The only positive of that frame of mind... I know it's not for me. I like what we've got now so much more. Yeah. But what's sort of good about that is if you're a bottom feeder team, if you are a Carlton of the past yeah, decade, yeah. you could be playing a top team, you just bog down, and there's a chance you scrape to a really, mm. really undeserving, sloppy 40 to 38 <laughs> win. Like, yeah. there's a chance. That, but now, with the way the game's being played, it's open up, it's more likely than not that the better teams will get a get a stranglehold upon the shitter teams. Yep. 
Um, but yeah, the the return of the full fort has been it's so good. Has been absolutely. Imagine if I told you at the start of the year, McDonald, <laughs> if I said this was an actual headline yep. in on the AFL website, uh, it was something along the lines of Texan a hundred a hundred goals now a possibility. Yep. Imagine if I told you Taylor Tex Walker. Could three rounds in be a legitimate sniff of kicking the ton? Yeah, I would have said you were dreaming. You would have said, I'm not doing a podcast with you, mate, because you've got no <laughs> idea what you're talking about in the footy department. Yeah, sorry, guys, I'm calling this podcast yeah. off. <laughs> ending it before it even starts. Yeah, no, so it's it's good. It's good. Your man, Mackay. Oh, my man, Mackay. <laughs> Wait until you got Charlie Kerno, Mitch McGovern up there. And with the... with they're the They're all going to kick seven. They're all going to kick seven. <laughs> and with the, uh, with the D's... You've got the best – the reason why Taylor Walker's come into his own here is because his <laughs> whole game is the lead and mark on the 45s. Mm. Yes, lead straight at the ball carry, take the mark out in front. It's nearly unstoppable. Yeah. Ben Brown. I know, yes. People say he's one-dimensional, but when your one dimension <laughs> is kicking goals and taking marks, yep. sure, like – and this is going to – on the flip side, mm. it's a death of the Levi Casbolt to the world who rely on the pack mark. R.I.P. Because – Back in the day when it was just congestion, congestion, you bomb the ball along and you just hope for a Hail Mary mark from mm. a Levi. But his game isn't a lead out, take the mark out in front. So he's had a horrible start to the season. But when Benny Brown gets on track, the Ds could be anything. Well, we're 3-0 and and the lid's just bubbling away. Yeah, bubbling it's a, away is, it, is it off? Is the lid officially off with a 3-0 uh, start? See, it's one of those ones where, yeah, like oh, I could never have dreamt of a 3-0 start because I've never seen it before. Yep. They reckon it's the first time since 2005. I don't remember. I, like, I, I can't recall mm. this ever happening. Um, and it's one of those ones where at the start of the season, it, we could have been one and two. Like Freo, yep. GWS, Saints, you go, none of those are certainties for this Melbourne football club. We, we don't have the trust in them. We don't really back them in to do it three weeks in a row. Yeah. But we have. And, but, you know, the pessimist and the lead keeper on her in me starts going, well, I'd be interesting to see where those three teams end up mm. at the end of the year. It's almost the PTSD of a, of a, the last 10 <laughs> years. Yeah. The trauma you've been through, it's yep. just still lingering. You know, you've been in a, you've been in a car crash, fatal car crash. Yeah. Well, not fatal for you, but maybe fatal for some. Yeah. The next day when you're driving your car, even though you're driving 60 the on a 60 The next day when I'm driving my yeah. car. <laughs> <laughs> you're driving along and you're still thinking, even though I'm not doing anything wrong, I'm shitting myself that I'm going to crash again. Yeah. Even though the days are doing all the right things, you're still sort of thinking, Jay, we might run off the rails here. Well, especially, you know, cast our ears and eyes back a couple of years ago, 2018, you know, I'm going into 2019. And I, I said to Cook, he brings this up famously, but yep. I, I, I go, it's so exciting going into a season knowing you're going to be decent. Yeah, absolutely. We're going to be decent. And Cook goes, oh, you never know. And I'm like... Mate, no team's you know, ever finished in yep. a prelim and not mate. Like that's impossible. You never fall that far backwards. Yeah, finish second last the next year. Yep, so absolutely. a part of me goes, yeah, we're we're three and zip, and it, it it's a ridiculously amazing feeling. Even though GWS had some injuries, Dockers had a few outs, um, the Saints as well. So it, you know there there is context to it. Yeah, but geez, it's a it's an amazing feeling and. Cosy Pickett. Oh, Cosy, <laughs> I said to you, I said to you yesterday. If I could handpick any other player in the league to come into the Carlton lineup right now, it'd just about be Cosy Pickett. Obviously, you know we know Dustin Munn's a lot better footballer than Cosy Pickett, but with the, <laughs> with an eye to the future, we're talking about membership sales, we're talking about bums in seats. Cosy Pickett could be the hottest ticket in footy right now. It's crazy because I looked at Port Adelaide, and they were bubbling along okay. They were sort of finishing tenth or seventh or tenth or seventh. Um, Ken Hinckley had a little bit of pressure, but Port stuck with him. And then they had that one draft where they, they weren't even like pick ones or twos. They were you pick sevens, pick 15, pick 20. And they got yep. Dersma, Butters and Rosie. And that changed their footy club. Yeah. And it's it's not the same. Um, but <clears throat> in 2019, you know, we finished second last or whatever. And we've picked up Lukey Jackson pick three. We moved up the draft and gave North our following year's first round pick to go up the draft and get Cozzy. Yeah. It was out of Cozzy and Cody Waitman, who yep. plays for the dogs, takes hangers, got the surfy hair. Yeah. It was out of those two. We picked Cozzy. And then because we skipped on Hayden Young at pick three for Luke Jackson, we got a WA boy who plays similarly in Trent Rivers yep. at pick 30. And they they are in the team every week. Lovely. And it is, and they're all 18, 19. And it's just put us in, in a different sort of 
uh, course. Like it is crazy, and I know people have said this for as long as footy has been around, but people have always said play the kids, like give the kids game time. Yeah, and it is obviously you don't want to tilt the balance too much. Like when Carlton did our rebuild and we just played people undeserving of games and oh, we just played yeah. a bunch of them, it was a bit. We've done that too far. Yeah, too <laughs> too far the other way. But you look at what Sydney's done. How they have just oh cut, my they are playing the most scintillating, exciting football. You'd never associate that with Sydney. Never. In 15 years. I think. <laughs> you never would. I think the start was they had nine players playing draft from the last two years. Phenomenal. Unbelievable. And Carlton up until the week before, yeah, um, this week we played Luke Parks, but before then we had none. And there were other teams as well just playing the kids and it was Paying dividends, massive dividends. Well, friend, friend of the show, Dutchie, uh, <laughs> I'm name dropping all yeah, the boys, but he said it's funny that the kids of the last couple of years have overtaken their kids from a couple of years ago. Yep. Um, I don't want to get these wrong because I think a couple of them are gone, but I think like a Haywards or a Fl- I think Florence in, but a couple of that crop that were their kids are now not really getting a game because your Braden Campbells are yep. uh, dominating. Yeah, I've always wondered, being – the Carlton supporter, and we've got so many draft picks in lately, some of them fantastic, like your Walshies and whatnot, but some of them not so good. Like, you know, we don't want to hang shit on anyone, but your O'Briens and that, <laughs> not, not, not performing at the standard they should be. And I've always wondered what's more important, the talent or the development? Like, do you reckon- That is a tough one because it's like- If a Paddy Dow got drafted to a Sydney, mm-hmm. is there a chance that he's bordering, you know, instead of questions whether he was going to get a game next week, maybe he could be a legitimate already- if not a star, a, a really solid fixture in the 22 each week. Well, yeah. Well, yeah. It, and it's also a tough one because it's like, at what point do you keep playing someone hoping that they do become something? Yeah. Or do you... It makes it really tough. Yeah, it is a tough question, but that's why we're behind the microphones here and we're not on the board of, direct, board of coaching at uh, the Blue Baggies or the Ds. Well, or I, I think the directors club. will be listening in and probably taking some of our advice. They should be, absolutely. Hey, do you reckon um, I said that Cozzy Pickett would be just about the number one draft pick into my team if I was, could pick anyone. Mm. If we were doing power rankings of every player in the league right now, so we're not talking about who the best player is in the league, but mm. the, just the power rankings, who would you have number one? So what? So what is the definition of a power ranking? So it's like who so it has the most momentum? Who's the most must see? Who's the most unstoppable player next week? Who, you know, it's like who's the, who's in chat? Who's the most alpha right now? Like just because put it this way, I think come September it's just Dustin Martin. Like he is just the most powerful player for a couple of years there. I reckon almost Eddie Betts almost had a claim when he was at Adelaide. He was almost you know he would have been top five mm. in the power rankings, well, even though he might not be in the top five players in the league in the power rankings. If that makes sense, yeah, he was he was up there. Well, I, I, Tex is almost unstoppable. Tex is number one. Yeah, who would have thought Tex would be leading the power rankings across the whole league? Yeah, he's the most must see player, um, and he's just shoving it up Kane Corn's bottom. It's so funny. It's a good dynamic. It's a great dynamic. I reckon they, in a couple of years, will be in the media being mates. I reckon they'll have... The, it, I, they it's one have, of those ones where like two boxers hate each other and you just know... Just to sell tickets. No, but you just know that in a couple of years they'll have a doco talking about their boxing fights and they're quite chummy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It but is it, so funny. Well, you see, I don't know if it's a bit of WWE where to get... You know, to, to put bums on seats, they make up the storylines and they pretend to hate each other and backstage they're having beers. Maybe to get people talking about Adelaide footy, to get them people talking about the Crows, the power, whatever, to ignite the rivalry and get some real feeling behind it. They've just, they've manufactured it. It, it is good for footy. It's great for footy. We need more, we need more outspoken people coming out. I like characters. Some people like, you know, I'm trying to think, who's who's someone who probably gets a bad rap? Maybe like Mitch Robinson, right? Yep. He comes out and he'll get a bad rap because he's a personality. He is very vocal about a lot of things. And I don't mind you not liking him. In fact, I love that you might not like him. Mm. But don't try and silence him. No. Nah. Let's have villains in the game. Let's have heroes. Let's have rivalries. Let's, yeah. Well, D- Dangerfield's a tough one where he's not a shit bloke. Like, uh, th- there are people that might be outspoken and they come across as a, as a dickhead so you don't like them. But Dangerfield's not someone where you're like, he is a bad person, he's no. a rat bag, I don't like Danger. But he's got this cocky aura that makes you want him to lose. Yeah, oh, look at brown low medalist dominating for the Cats. I want him to lose because he's a bit quirky, a bit outspoken. So he's another one that like, he, he cops it. Mason Cox is up there as well. Yeah, as, but Cox is like, people love to hate Mason Cox, I reckon. Co- but I think even the people that hate 
Mason Cox, when he has that odd game every few, you know, once, twice a year, he comes out and dominates, contested marked goals. I reckon even the people that hate him love watching him. I laugh. I get so excited watching a Collingwood game to watch him because he's either going to do something so embarrassing. Yeah. And real like real head scratcher stuff. Yeah. Or he just turns it on. And more often than not, he like when he when he started, obviously he was throwing the ball to keep it in and whatnot. He was doing a couple of little mistakes. But when you watch him now, he is a chance at every marking contest. Hundred percent. So it's like he's getting hands to every and it's just so exciting because sometimes he brings down the biggest absolute clunks, turned around, slots them from thirty, then starts giving I it to people when American. they're down by forty. Yeah. <laughs> I love his American mannerisms. Like you'll see, I don't I'm not, I've never been big into American sports. In fact, I'm not even small into American sports. I yeah. don't I don't like them. Do um, you do you feel left out in that sort of instance? Because sometimes when I see the NBA popping off or at the NFL, I go, geez, I would love to have a convo about how the NFL is going because it looks cool. I reckon you've only got, especially a different story if um, you haven't really got much of a life and you can literally dedicate your entire life to following every sport. Yep. But I've only got so much time that I can dedicate to sport yep. and it's <coughs> the Carlton Football Club, it's the Australian cricket team and it's the Crystal Palace Football Club in the – yep. Premier League. I There's just only so much room in your heart. Yeah, and I, I don't want to follow a sport and half know the players and half know what's going on and be yeah. like, oh, yeah, you know, I, I want to, like, I, I reckon if I was supporting the NBA, I wouldn't have enough time to know exactly where everyone is on the ladder, know what's happening. I'd yeah. be, it wouldn't ha- be happening. See, yeah, I'm sort of the opposite where I've got a lot of time, but I've got no space in my brain. <laughs> yeah, right, <laughs> like yeah. I, like, I've got not enough memory and bandwidth <laughs> to follow along of everything that's happening, especially when 82 games, yeah. there's about 30 teams. I do, there's just so much happening. But I, I do look and go, like, sometimes you'll see interviews with AFL players and they're talking about how they're into their fantasy NFL and stuff, and I go... It does seem that cool. That would be a cool, cool. a cool hobby. Yeah, but as I was, <laughs> I was saying about the American sports, <laughs> um, they always celebrate... Like, even if, just imagine the football equivalent would be ball up, um, someone lays a tackle and we get a repeat ball up. Yeah. Very standard tackle. If they didn't lay that tackle, it, they would be front page of the paper for being a coward, right? It's just yeah. a tackle they are expected <laughs> to make. Yeah. Um, and the American footballers would get up, they're high five and they're bumping each other, they're celebrating like they just won the grand final. Mm. Um, and I think you see a bit of that in Coxie. Like, he's got that, he brings that culture over where he just celebrates everything and he can't just do something. And I'm not knocking him for this, but he can't do nah. something without that just being, he needs to, he needs to signal it something. Yeah. I love it. I reckon it's fantastic for the game. No, nah, it is. It's, yeah, it's sick. And, um, I like seeing probably the people who get around the back pocket pluggers. I, I like seeing a few back pocket pluggers on Twitter get sucked in by his... Yeah, yeah, yeah. A few yeah. Rezzy's players watch an American dominate our sport and they can't do anything but pull him down. Yeah, for sure. Uh, and, it, yeah, it does make me laugh. Like, uh, friend of the show, Ethan Baker, rinses coxie. Every game. Have you made have you made a bet with the boys to see if you could just how many of them you could name in the podcast? Like, who's our mate? Like, Trez, how are you going, Trez? We haven't said you yet. No, mate. it was funny. I was talking to a friend of the show, Austin Cookson, beforehand yeah. just, <laughs> just to see how many I could I could get in. Um no, nah, but yeah, it's it's good for the game, Coxie, and I rate him. Few massive moments from the round that's just been uh already we've had some screamers. For starters, we can't ignore Zach Bailey. Yeah. And the poetry that was Zach Bailey, like to be the one last week. That how does that happen? How do you get two influential moments in the last thirty seconds of games? I know it doesn't work like this because some, yeah. how the world works. Like if you had if you had got the free kick and kicked the goal, it would have changed the future, and he wouldn't have had that shot again potentially. Yeah. But yeah. imagine if he did. Imagine if he had two <laughs> shots after the siren, kicked them both, kicked them both. <laughs> that that goal, the minute the it wasn't even, the half second after he struck his boot, he knew it was going through. He turned around to celebrate. Yeah. It was I can't imagine me. I'm the horrible kick of the footy, as you know. I couldn't imagine being that good of a kick of footy that you know where you point your feet, you point your toe, and the minute you make contact, you know whether it's a goal or not. You don't even have to look because you know you're so reliable. Your kicking action so reliable, yeah. Not so well. You know that with the contact you made, if it's going through. Yeah, there was no. Yeah, yeah. Because if I kick it, sometimes I'll hit it well, but it's got this like late in swing or late out swing, or you know, it, it's not home. It's, it's not a time. pure strike. But I suppose that Marvel, no wind. Nice night. Yeah. He hit it and he just, he just knew. knew. He just knew. And 50 metres, there's a lot of room for 
something to happen. You know, wind or whatever might happen. Jeez, a, a goal in the goal square at GMHBA on the siren is good. Yeah. But to get that ripped out of your hands oh. in a real blatant cheating way. Legitimately. From the cats. Legitimately. <laughs> and then a week later against the Pies, who there's a little bit of niggle throughout the week and you can't go home. And then it's once again, it's the same bloke. It's just ridiculous. Question without warning, which is what this whole podcast basically is. Power rankings number two. Player. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> I've seen in rugby. I don't know how long. I'm not an, I, I watched the odd storm game when it's on. But um, did you say? Do you see now? I don't know how long it's been around for. They have the captain's. The cap, is it the captain's call or something like that? Where if you disagree with the decision, you can. It's like the r- review in the cricket, and you get a couple of game. So really, yeah. In the NRL now, at any point, you can call the captain's review or whatever it's called, and they go upstairs and they have a look, and you only get one or two a game. Do you? Would you? Is that something you'd like to see introduced into footy, or do you reckon that you know? I love human error. Do you? Yeah, I do. I like, like, that Geelong one was frustrating because that shouldn't have happened. That that was way too blatant. Yep. But I like when a hands in the back gets called a push and I sort of like getting angry at the human error and I like just... I don't like human error. I like difference in interpretation. So I like that... And, and I, I sort of, in saying di- difference in interpretation, in the UFC, when I watch a... Uh, ref will come into the rooms before the fight and say, I interpret um, the clinch a little bit differently. I don't mind if you work in the clinch. And and then some referees will walk in and say, I don't like you. You're holding each other. I'll, I'll break that up straight away. So I sort of like the thought of like every umpire interpreting the rules and it is the rules, but a little bit differently where like some might be really hot on the diving. Some might be really hot on the deliberates and you just know, oh fuck, this bloke is going to call it because he's, that's the way he interprets it. I, I love the difference in interpretation. I love that there could be a tackle where it could quite easily be holding the ball and, you know, it's, it's Carlton's kick or it could quite easily be in the back. And it's, yeah. strong, and it's up to the umpire to decide, right, which one, you know, was it 60% holding the ball and 40% in the back? All right, we'll pay to hold the ball. Yep. I love that. But I don't love a blatant – like everyone in the stadium can see that that was legitimately of 100% course. of the – 100 out of 100, you yeah. made the wrong call. Yeah. And that's – it is a danger. Like you've seen it come into cricket where the review was brought in for the howler, like the blatant plum LB that's just been missed for whatever reason. Um, and now it's been turned into, oh, is it just clipping the bales? Well, what I was going to say is VAR doesn't really ha- seem to have fixed. Uh, it's caused more dramas nearly it, in the soccer. It has. There are, but in saying that, there'll be, say there's six VAR, VAR decisions over a weekend. Five of them will be good decisions where it's like, right, you've just prevented a howler, but then there'll be one which was a ticky touch and people focus on the ticky touch. And I hate when the ticky touch gets overruled and like a pen's given because it's like technically that was, you know, he clipped his leg or whatever in the box or or whatever. But it's like realistically that should not, like technically he did clip him, didn't touch the ball. So it is VAR, you know, pen given. But it's sort of like, let that play on. A hundred percent. That's and if it was, and this isn't even something that's in discussion with footy, so I don't even know why we're talking about it. But yeah. if it was introduced into footy, you'd want it to be. It has to be to prevent the howler. Like a hundred out of a hundred people would say that's a free kick. Not one where it's like, oh, yeah, yeah. I suppose there's a fingertip in the back, but I would like to see it introduced in that regard because that has cost. Geelong, uh, sorry, Brisbane, four points. And that could cost them top four, which cost them a premiership. Like that, They should be two and one. Yeah. And so, now they're one and two. They've got, got the Bulldogs, so they could go one and three. And if you knew with the captain's call that it's like, okay, I um, this could legitimately cost us. We This could save us a game later on. You wouldn't be reviewing it for a ticky touch in the back on the wing, you would save it for the massive moments because, you know, if you waste it, then, yeah. you know. So I, I think that there is room and scope for it in the game to prevent. That way it takes out the, you're, just, you're here in the week, SEM, people are ringing up going, my team was robbed, this is bullshit, yeah. they hate the umpires. If you have the captain's call and you burn your reviews and then you can only blame yourself, you can only blame yeah, the captain. Yeah, true. But if it gets to an end of the game and that happens and your captain's review, imagine the drama as well. Yeah. Captain's review, yeah, we made the wrong call. Zach Bailey, your kick, and he wins the game. It'd be unreal. Yeah, safe. yeah. Well, I think it, if they can do it in the NRL, I think they they can do it in footy. Yeah, for sure. Another question without warning. Yep. Uh, Jason Castagna, right, often cops a lot of flack for being the most undeserving three-time premiership player of all time. Yep. 
Um, bit stiff. But bit stiff, <laughs> bit stiff. Goes like, ego, ego's okay. Um, do you think that what do you reckon is a bigger <laughs> injustice to the to the talent reward spectrum or system? Mm-hmm. Jason Castagna, 100 games, three premierships. Remembering that you plot some players like your Boomer Harveys and whatnot are sitting on zero premierships. Yep. Uh, not Boomer, Robert Harvey, Banger Harvey. Yep. Uh, or Josh Bruce kicking 10 goals in a game. Which one do you reckon is a bigger bigger blight on the <laughs> <laughs> on the talent <laughs> talent uh, reward system? Jeez, I wonder if footy classifieds kicking <laughs> off with <laughs> Josh Bruce 10 games, uh, 10 goals in a game, real blight. <laughs> <laughs> and like they, they zoom in on Lordo uh, and they're all just... Caro, Caro's got arrow, the arrow is a footy god gifting Josh Bruce 10 goals. <laughs> um, it was a good performance by Josh Bruce, to be fair. It was. I said in an inbox, I was like, he is horrible. He was horrible last year. Yep. Um, it was just the number one. Oh, we never. I hate begging players because no one ever goes out there to play their work. Everyone's out there to try their best. Mm. Um, but at the same time, if you're underperforming, yeah, you're underperforming. Yeah. And I think there's no the unnecessary. It's a, it's a performance based industry. <laughs> That's right. I don't think there's room for DMing players and going. Oh, you were drafted with pick three. You can't kick. You, you're a prick. I hate you. You want yeah. But if you're underperforming, mate, you, we're allowed to come out and, and say call call a spade to spade. And Josh Bruce yeah. was un- underperforming some, crime. and he was, and he was, and I think he'd probably admit that last year he couldn't get near it. Mm. Um, you know who's sort of uh, turning it on along with you know Josh Bruce is Tim Membry. He was someone. He was someone in the Bruce category for mine. Yeah, obviously they both played at the Saints, but you know he wasn't the tall, tall key. And you sort of look at him as maybe a second or third key forward and um, now he's just marking and You know who my favourite of that ilk is? Or I was? Tory Dixon. Yes. I, I yes. love Tory Dixon being this proto, this, oh, what's the word? Sort of like a pseudo key forward. Yeah. Um, not really big enough to be a proper, you know, dominating Charlie Didn't Tory Dixon. Dixon kick 10? He's kicked 10 in a game. Has he? I reckon he has. Oh, I love the way, I love the way Tory Dixon went about it. It was just, he strikes me as someone that had just He's someone that you see at local level football and go, gee, he should have played AFL, but he was never tall enough or never. And he is just, I love Tory Dixon. I love that sort of forward. I think Tory Dixon did come from local football. I think he was playing like Vaffa two years before he got There you drafted. go. That's what, that's, that's what he strikes me as. And I reckon there are a lot of people I see playing local footy that haven't had that height um, and could have gone on to be anything. I, I did see something in local footy uh, over the weekend which absolutely bamboozled me. Mm. went to watch Eltham versus St. Mary's in the Northern Footy League. They played a good Friday game, so round one. Sensational, massive crowd. And great friend of mine. Time for me to start name dropping some friends. <laughs> no, don't do that. Great friend of mine, uh, <laughs> Lara Laser Winter, is a trainer of uh, St. Mary's. Yep. And um, she fresh, it was her first <laughs> year, and players were getting injuries and they ran out of ice. So she had to go to, a, to, go to the car. They ran out of ice. She had to go find a survey. So she's, you know, as you can imagine, a mad rush. Like, the game's on. You've got to get ice and get back as quick as you can. Plenty of traffic because yep. the car park's full. She goes out, goes to two or three servos. There are no ice. Spewing. <laughs> goes to Woolies, no ice. So yep. then she has to go through a drive through bottle Was it like her fourth bottle of the cherry? At the Eltham, Eltham Pub bottle drive drive-thru. Yep. She goes through um, and grabs two bags of ice uh, and goes to pay. And the woman behind the counter, middle-aged woman, dare I say a Karen, yep. says... Uh, have you got your ID? And she goes, no, nah, I'm here to buy ice. I'm only buying ice. It's frozen water. Yeah. And she goes, I need to see your ID to go buy, make a purchase of the bottle though. And Lara goes, look, this is a situation. I've just come from a, a seniors game of football down the road. Players are getting injured. We need the ice to treat the injuries. Yeah. All the other places were closed. I'm not buying alcohol and buying ice. And she just goes, sorry, I can't do it. So Lara had to drive off and go find, go drive an extra 10 minutes to go find somewhere else. Is that not the most mental thing you've ever heard? That is, that's frustrating to hear. So where did she go after the bottle? She just went to another servo. So she managed to get it, but she came back. The game was pretty much over by the time she'd already come back. So they managed to get the ice for the end of the game, <laughs> which, which is nice. But I'll, I'll, on the drive up here, I yep. wanted. I want everyone to know this story because of how much secondhand anger <laughs> I had. So I rang SCN. 
on the drive up to tell him. <laughs> it was the White, Jared Waitley show, Waitley, but um, he he's out of bounds because it's uh, Easter break. So they had some, you know, it was it wasn't it was a bit of a no name. It wasn't even like a Jake Clark. Or Did you a, get on? No, nah, I didn't get on. I tried. They kept on saying nine, whatever the number is, ringing now. I rang like six times and couldn't even couldn't get through. So, but where I, where I'll be ringing is Dwayne Russell's show midday. Uh, Dwayne, uh, it's called it's called Dwayne's World. It's on every midday during the week, Monday to yeah. Friday, and he does midday madness from twelve to one. And the rule is, if you call, you get on. So you're guaranteed to get on. So I'm going to ring and I'm just going to give the Elton Pub the biggest barrel you've ever seen. The bottle. <laughs> if you to our to our loyal loyal listeners, you've been with us for 40 minutes now or half an hour. Yep. Do us a favor. If you really love this show, boycott the Elton Pub bottle. Oak. Bloody oath. One more uh, unbelievable observation that I made from the footy this weekend. Mm. I went to two games of footy. I went to Essendon uh, St Kilda with uh, Michael. Another name drop. <laughs> and we went to, I went to Carlton Frio with me old man, Scotty. Yep. Both times they played a song um, a, that is a ripper song. Oh, wait, no, you go. Um, it's by Gary Glitter. And it's like, oh, Oh, yeah. Do you know that one? Yeah. I think that, I think. Initially, I'm, I thought that was Black Skinhead. By yeah, Kanye. I reckon I mixed it up. I reckon I went Black Skinhead <laughs> at the start. But afterwards, I reckon Black Skinhead might have stolen a bit from Gary Glitter. <laughs> anyway, both times, I'm not a long gone. Jeez, this is a great pump up song. Like, if you if you haven't heard it before, I've actually got it in my Spotify because I looked it up yesterday because of how much it hyped me up. It's definitely my rock and roll part two is what it's called by Gary Glitter. And I'm turn to me, old man, Scotty. Gee, this is a good song. Yeah. He goes, yeah, too bad he's a pedophile. I said, what do you mean? Oh, no. Gary Glitter, convicted in prison pedophile, and we're still playing his tunes. Uh, yeah. So. <laughs> <laughs> you can't you can't be doing that, surely. So I'm, where, don't get where, me wrong. Oh. I'm not massive on cancel culture. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not massive on it. Peggy Le Pew and all this sort of stuff. When Faulty Towers got the can, I was like, that's not, that's not right. But a convicted. <laughs> It's a bit of a different <laughs> different ballpark when we're talking convicted pedophile. Pe- people pe- little boys as well. I don't know if that oh, makes no. it I don't know if that makes it worse <laughs> if it's little boys. But pe- yeah, people really pick and choose, don't they, who they cancel. Do you reckon the AFL are aware they're playing a pedophile song before each game? I think if you're putting anyone with the name Gary Glitter on, you know that there's, <laughs> yeah, there's something going to be a bit of drama involved. So, so when were they playing the games? Because when you me- uh, when were they playing the songs? Because when you mentioned that just before, I was going to say I went to Marvel last week, and after every goal, they were playing music, and I was on the third level, like under the speakers. So while I was trying to vlog or talk to the boys after a goal was kicked, music's blaring. And was I- it like Taylor Swift and that sort of stuff? It was just yeah, well just. Just tunes. I don't like the pop songs. I don't like when they have. I, I don't like songs after goals. I'm, yeah, I'm not big on the songs after goals. I'm not goals sure if either. they're doing it at the G or anywhere else because I haven't uh, been. I, I know when I noticed Gary Glitter, it was at three <laughs> quarter time. And then I remember that oh, I was yeah. like. Three quarter time is great. And I remember was, I was like, oh, I heard this song yesterday and I liked it as well. But you can't be playing a convicted <laughs> pedophile songs before games. I don't care what anyone says. Uh, there was a period of there when that Leaving Neverland documentary came out with Michael Jackson. And Michael Jackson's done pretty well to yeah. not be uh, cancelled. And main, and there were, there were, he was cancelled for like a week or two. Like people stopped playing him, but then there was a big uproar. Like, oh, he's not convicted. He's, yeah. People stopped playing him. Then we thought, geez, Dirty Diana needs a bit of a... Dirty <laughs> Diana <laughs> is his best track by a mile. Um, another unbelievable little, little tidbit to come out of the weekend's footy is Dad and I, um, we used our mate. I do have a membership, a 10 game membership. Yep. But um, it doesn't get you the best seats. But dad's mates have level two on the wing, unbelievable seats. So we used their memberships because they went away for Easter. And right behind us, but we didn't have the membership cards. We just had tickets. Yeah. Right behind us was a special little room for drinking like ice cold beer on the pots. And like, instead of little cups, you got pots, you got TVs in there, Ripper. But it's for a very exclusive group of Carlton members. I think it's called like the Carltonians or something. It's not any membership can get you in. Yep. And dad and I were like during, before the game and during every break, we wanted to get, we wanted to get our way in there, but there's a couple of security guards and whatnot. So we just walk up and we go, yeah, and we go, no, we've been members for 10 years. You know, we play the game and they go, no, we need to see your card. Dad plays dumb. He gets his standard ticket in with the, 
barcode and they're going, oh, nah, we need to see your actual membership. And I'll go, oh, no, I'll get my email up. So I got my email up for my standard membership, showed him. Anyway, we ended up bullshitting our way in. I think they had enough of us for like, going. That's unreal. So we get in, we have an icy cold pot. Um, and then we're on the way out, we're like, lads, just remember the face so we can – we can keep going in. So we kept going in, which was fantastic. But then, <laughs> and that was great. But then we're sitting there and dad tells me the most unbelievable story. Mm. This is all time. He is a proper fanatic. Like he used to go to every single Carlton game literally every week for decades. Like yeah, he had the big duffel jacket on. You may not pick it now on him now. Like I know that we know che- that Cheer squad? Not quite cheer squad, but at, at, the, after, at the social club after every game, like just yeah. die hard Carlton. Yeah. He told me that... He remembers being five years old. His first ever memory was listening to the 1970 grand final when Jesse Linko took the mark. That's his first memory. He was listening to the transistor radio out there. Was that 1970? Something like that, 1970. Yeah. I was going to say it looks real old. <laughs> yeah, and he was listening to it out the back and that was his first – and he's gone to every grand final since. But, um, yeah, he told me that after – it was like, say, I'm making a number up, but in the grand final in the 80s, mm. um, uh, the Carlton's won the grand final – and they used to have the social club where you used to go in, the players would drink and whatnot. Yep. Um, but after a grand final, it's not like they let anyone in. It's basically just the players and the players' friends, family, mm. whoever they want in, whoever they allow in. And dad goes up, uh, his, their, dad and his best mate Mick are at the front of the social club and they're looking in and like, fuck, we want to get in there. So he walks up to the security guard and security with, you know, with all the confidence in the world that my old man had. And the, the, uh, the security guards go, whoa, 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 you can't come in here, mate. And dad goes, mate, I'm Steve DeRuy who's the biggest fringe player at Carlton. He had four touches <laughs> in the grand final. He goes, man, I'm Steve DeRuy. And the three guys go, come right in. So dad's there drinking <laughs> with David Park and was a coach. He's getting blind, really? getting blind with Park and all the players. And for the whole night, imagine if Dee's won the grand final and that you're in be, the room. That would be You're unreal. having beers with track. You're, you're <laughs> telling stories with bloody Benny Brown and whatnot. He said it was the ho- just about the highlight of his life. Jeez, yeah, like uh, you see that, that is unbelievable. Like, you see the footage of Dusty like walking into the clubs yeah. after a grand final and you're like, oh my God, imagine being there. Imagine it's like you, Melbourne in the grand final this year, all the players are in the room, you go to walk in and they go, whoa, 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 you can't come in, mate. And you go, I'm Trent Rivers. What are you yeah, talking yeah. about? Trent Rivers. And they <laughs> yeah. go, oh, sorry, sorry, pal. And the security guards would shit themselves. If you act it well and you go, I just want a grand final, man. I'm Trent Bloody Rivers. Yeah. And yeah. they go, oh, sorry. Yeah, sorry, mate. We can yeah. get straight in. Absolutely <sighs> hilarious. Yeah, that is unbelievable. Yeah, all the time. I thought it was, I thought it was a very funny year. Um, I want to ask you about a, a couple of teams who are sort of towards the bottom okay. of the ladder. Yep. Um, and there's, there's one footy club in particular that gives a lot of heat online, yep. and, and that's the Bombers. Okay. Um, They're in no position to be given. Are you just talking about Mitter? You mate, best <laughs> No, no, no. I mean, it's pretty good, but I'm talking about there's there's a few on your on your on your Twitters and comments sometimes. Yeah. Well, and also if you're Cal Ward or Dill Grimes, you, you know, yeah. you're, you're well aware of the the Bombers faithful. They get quite passionate, and we love it. But um, geez, did I cop it when I tipped them for the uh, the wooden spoon? Yeah. In my pre-season yeah, and they've got, I went to that game. They looked so as much as whenever there's a big game like that and a team gets trampled, you tend to focus on the disappointment of the team that lost instead of the team that won. Everyone's coming down and going, "Oh, thank you, that was pathetic." But gee, if we want to put the spotlight on Essendon for a second, that was scintillating football. It was a performance. They looked fantastic, and like their biggest, uh, I think Essendon's biggest question mark is if a Darcy Parish and an Aaron Francis top ten draft pick. Yep. If they can turn into A graders, then they have a future. But if Darcy Parish and Aaron Francis are B minus graders, then they they don't really have a premiership contending future anytime soon. Yeah. So at the start of the year, I was concerned when you Danaher's, Fantasia's, and uh, over a couple of years they've lost a few, haven't they? Like, yeah. Uh, 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 I'm trying well, to Fantasia and do you already said him? Uh, Fantasia Sardi. Danaher. Oh, Sard. Yeah, that's the other one I was thinking about. Um, so I don't know. They lost a, cu- a couple of key players, and I was just like, well, that automatically in my mind goes, you're not going to be better than last year. And last year they were what, 11th. Well, 12th. what uh, Michael said to me, Essendon supporter, long time best friend, said to me, um, yeah, you could look at it like that, but you could look at it from the other angle where Danaher and Fantasia never played. So they were, for the whole season or two beforehand, they weren't there. So he was, he was like, we only lost one player, really. We only lost Saad, and we've gotten more players in. Yeah. So there is room, even though disappointed to lose yeah. Saad, no, a few other players. Yeah, that in. does make sense. But all last year they were saying, 
oh, we don't have Danaher yeah, Fantasia. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> so yeah. that was sort of their out. And then to go, well, no, well, we didn't even have them anyway. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> um, but, yeah, so that, that, that does make sense. But I, I just saw, you know, a couple of players leave and I was just going, I don't see them getting better now. Yeah. So I see them going down. I love their draft. I love Cox. Yeah. Perkins. He's sick. Yeah. Old mate Reed, I think it is. Yep. So they, that's a good little crop that they got. And I'm excited by that. But I just saw them going down before going up. And then I was going, well, North weren't horrific last year. And they was that their rock bottom year last year? Yeah. No, it wasn't. It's yep. it's absolutely this yep, year. for sure. Um, and then I thought, Crows looked all right. And, I, you know, sometimes I'm very uh, impromptu when I'm filming. Yeah. So I just went the Bombers. And I'm editing going, I'm going to cop this. <laughs> well, in fantasy, other teams that were meant to be trash, like Adelaide are looking great. Sydney are looking great. It's home yep. to North Melbourne who... Yeah. Oh, North Melbourne. I was going to screenshot. Because, like, the week... They get moved to Tasmania. They are. They're going to Tasmania. I'm sorry, North fans listening. Um, on the one hand, I feel sorry for you. On the other, if you don't want your team to move to Tasmania, go to the bloody game. <laughs> show, your, show your support. Wear your colours. Round one, I could get this wrong, but I heard that there were only 8,000 to 10,000 North Melbourne fans there. Yeah, I think there was 11,000 total. Who they play? I can't remember, but even still, you haven't... Free? No, we played free. You haven't watched your team in over a year because of the COVID. Round one... Uh, there Port. Is Port. Port. Struggling team. Go out, show your support. And there would be some people listening here who went to the game. Fantastic. Get your supporters there and then maybe you won't move to Tasmania. It's really tough. It's a tough sell though. <laughs> it's a tough sell. Because it, it's it's not like a... Adelaide last year were losing games, but there was a few where they... I don't know. They were in and amongst it. Gold Coast. I don't know. <laughs> they were in and amongst it. But this is real Melbourne 2010, 2011, 2012, 2013 mm. where... It's going to be 10 goals every game. Do you think the young crop show enough to suggest that in five years' time they'll be top eight? No, but then again, neither did Gold Coast and they flipped it yep. in a year. True. It um, only takes one good draft and a, one big change in culture and it can happen. I just can't believe, and Kane Corns is hot on this, I just can't believe they passed on Logan McDonald. Yeah, it, because you in, don't it, want to make the judgment early, and I nah, feel sorry. For I, I don't want to say it either because a Melbourne supporter, you know, we butchered fifteen drafts in a row. So we've I've, drafted Paddy down like Yo O'Brien with pick three and pick ten. But it was just one of those ones where all year Logan McDonald was second on every draft thing. So yeah. it was like Jamara was number one, but because Bulldogs didn't have number one, he jumped up. So then, then it was you know maybe Riley Tilthorpe to the Crows, who they did pick. And then it was Logan McDonald. It was Riley and, and Logan all yep. year. They just got rid of Ben Brown. Nick Larky, I rate. I yep. really do rate Larky. I love uh, Zerha. Yep. I love their forward, but he's not a, a tall key nah, forward. He might be that Tory Dixon top. He is. And, but, uh, yeah, he is. And then that Logan McDonald, it was like, he's they've got Logan McDonald. There's no way. Yeah. You know, the Crows are going to pick the South Australian boys, and then they've got Logan McDonald. And yep. they went Will Phillips, so I think he's like – a safe 200 gamer, I believe. Yeah. Um, well, that's so, what, uh, so that's it, what it probably Paddy wasn't a bad pick, but it, it wasn't like they picked Dusty. Logan McDonald looks unreal. He, he does. Reliable so good. shot. He just looks like a smart football. He's like, if he, if Sportsbet did odds of Logan McDonald to be an All-Australian full forward, he would be paying at some point in the screen. He's a dollar 10. It yep. is guaranteed. He looks phenomenal. He does. And I, I do believe Will Phillips, they reckon future captain, and he he does look the good. So I think they've gone with a – it's one of those drafts where this bloke's going to be 150, 200 game player, yep. but he might not be the dusty of the draft. Like yeah. someone who is a freak freak. Well, I know when we drafted Paddy Dow, everyone was saying, or the experts were saying, this is probably the safest pick of the draft. Like he's he, unlikely he's going to become – the greatest player in the league. Yeah. But every chance he becomes, say, a Mark Murphy, like, you know, a 200, 250 gamer, one or two time all Australian. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, like, just do that, which is a great career and a safe pick. Yeah. But he hasn't turned out to be that at all. <laughs> very, <laughs> very far from it. But um, hang in there, Paddy, if you're watching, I believe in you, mate. But yeah. Lo- Logan. I like the way you said it louder as if he was just yeah. out of earshot. Yeah. <laughs> but Logan, Logan McDonald, it will be something else. Um, before we. Give it a wrap. Before we give it a wrap. Yeah. Went to um, a market 
couple of days ago with my little sister. It's real indie market. I went there thinking it was going to be indie, like cool stuff, um, but it turned out to be hippie. So I was thinking Fitzroy, you're going to buy some cool shit you'll look cool at a <laughs> festival with. Yeah. But it turned out to be literally the most hippie thing I've ever seen. Good on him, but not me or Cassie's <laughs> cup of tea. Yeah. So you're walking around and there's ponchos, there's like um, Jamaican looking hats, they're selling hemp oil and stuff, like really out there stuff. Yeah. All natural. <laughs> But there was one item that really surprised me and it was $2 and it was old footy cards. Mm. So I bought the footy cards for $2. <laughs> yeah. And I thought we'd do our first ever uh, giveaway. Oh, cool. First ever giveaway on the Back Pocket Plugger <laughs> podcast. And this is how it's going to work. So these are footballers. You know, we all love doing it. We all love saying to our mates um, to pl- pluck, a, pluck a random footballer. The typical, you did a whole song about it basically, Colt Figure, an old one. Like you can just pluck any out right now. Uh, Joel Corey from Toronto. Jo- Joel Corey. Not exactly a Colt Figure, but he, he played it straight. He did well. So yeah. it's just funny naming a random player like a Joel Corey and then your mate will uh, <laughs> return there with an Austin Montemiri yeah. and then someone comes back <laughs> yeah. with, I don't know, bloody Daniel Pierce or something yeah. I and mean, you'll have a great laugh. Um, so some of the players in here, I'm going to give them a shuffle because I reckon there's a player in here that you'll definitely pick out. If I said to you, pick one player out of here, if you want to give it a quick skim, I guarantee you there's one, oh, well, maybe there's too many for you to have a quick skim through. But there's one player in there that I, I just have a gut feel you will go, oh, yeah, that's the one that hits the trigger when we're talking about cult figures. But the competition that we're going to do is... If you can, co- uh, should we go a comment or should we go a share on the Insta story? We'll just go a comment. Comment a random footballer that you think will give us a giggle and whoever does the best random footballer that gives us a giggle, uh, you'll get this footy card that Caden's about to announce. Who are we giving away? I don't know if there's one clear one. Danya? Well, to me, it's Richo. Oh, do you? Oh, oh, for me, for funny. Wait, 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 wait. Well, I don't reckon... I don't reckon Matthew Richardson's funny when someone goes, oh, Austin Wanamiri, and you go, Matty Richardson. I reckon. Oh, Nigel Smart? No. Nah, it, <laughs> <laughs> it could have been any of them. That's Nigel Smart burnt his foot on ashes. He walked, oh, he walked over yeah. hot coals. For some reason, I thought you'd pick Peter Riccardi. No, yeah, well, he was my third. He was your third. <laughs> uh, so look, Pete, Peter Riccardi is every Geelong person like Geelong supporter who was my age favorite player really if you ask anyone like your noons or everyone just goes oh, I love Peter Riccardi when I was a kid see for me because I grew up in Melbourne obviously not in Geelong he was such, just such a just a random 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 player yeah wasn't like a yeah anyway uh, yeah so you comment you comment uh your favorite random player yep of the past yep. and we'll give you no, just Martin Peter Riccardi. I'll send, I'll send it out to you. <laughs> but don't chuck in Richo. We're, I won't chuck in Richo. He's, saving him for yeah. a rainy day. We'll save him for another 25 years. Then he might be in the category. Yeah, for sure. All right, we'll wrap it up there. Rog, uh, how, how'd we go, mate? How, how do you think we went? I think we good, went... Good to get it out of the way. Good to get our, um, you know... Not good. just good to get it out of the way. I thoroughly enjoyed every minute of it. Yeah, and out of the way wasn't the right Yeah, <laughs> that's like somewhere it's like, oh, you haven't paid your bills on time. And it's like, oh, God, I better pay the electricity. <laughs> Just, a bit, so, bit of so, bit so, shit, but glad I got it out of the way. So, sorry, sorry, George, I'm running errands. <laughs> yeah. Doing, doing a podcast. Uh, no, it was good to finally get one on the board. If we're talking about, you know, usually when you're grading um, a test, it'll be A plus F. Um, if we're grading today's podcast on sort of disposals and goals and tackles. What sort of game are we talking? I reckon we've had a Gus Brayshaw. Yep. I so reckon we've had 19 touch. Oh, t- t- 20 it's a big difference between 19 and 20. 20 and I'm happy to cop 19. No, 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 no. Well, I did want to have curtains behind us and that could have been... I reckon we've had 21. I reckon we've had 21. 21. And we've won. We've won. Yeah, yeah. we've won. And we've had a couple, so it, couple it, it, of tackles. It wasn't a 24 and we lost. It was like yeah. a 21, but we won. Gutsy effort and 100% keep the spot for next week. Yeah. On, the, on the train. Just be stiff if we got dropped and we couldn't do the yeah. time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, well, we'll take 21 and let's aim for 40 by season's end. Bloody oath. All right. Thanks to everyone who tuned in and watched the Back Pocket Plug Up podcast. And we'll see you next time. Cheers.